Blue Dolphins, Chapter 1. Scenery. Chapter 1 takes place on an island in Coral Cove. The village is called Galasset. Main characters are Corona, the story is being told by Corona, a 12-year-old girl. Rama is Corona's brother. He is 6. Chief Chowig. He is Corona's father and is the leader of the village Galasset. Captain Orlov. He is a Russian man that captains the other ship. Important facts. The Red Alert ship came to their island. Corona and Rama were surprised as they had never seen a ship before, although Corona had been told about ships. Some people from the village went down to the water, while Corona and others stayed hidden in case of possible attack. A boat of six men left the ship and paddled ashore. There was a man on the ship that Corona feared was a Russian. Captain Orlov and his 40-man crew wanted to stay on our island to hunt sea otter, but my father was worried because of a previous hunt that knocked that did not go go well, so they both agreed to equal parts of what was hunted. They talked more, but Corona did not hear it because then she accidentally moved a small rock off the cliff and never looked up. She ran. This is Chapter 2 of The Island of the Blue Dolphin. Captain Orlov and his Alouette hunters moved to the island that morning, making many trips from their ship to the beach of Curl Cove. Since the beach was small and flooded when a tide came, they asked to camp on higher grounds. Karana's dad agreed to this. Maybe I should tell you about the island. Coral Cove Island is two leagues long and one league wide, and if, you were sta- and if you were standing on one of the hills in the middle of it. The first thing you would notice on Coral Cove Island is the wind. It blows every day, sometimes from the northwest, northeast, and sometimes from the south. All the winds are strong except for the south. I wonder if... If this weather will affect their hunting. In chapter 3, Karana talks about the kelp beds. She also describes how the canoes are gliding across the ocean. This chapter is very sad because it talks about the alouettes and otters. Everyone is in fear of Captain Orlov and the alouettes. In chapter 4 of Island of the Blue Dolphins, it starts when the alouettes start taking down their skin tents and carrying them to the beach because they are leaving. Captain Orlov had still not paid Corona's father for all the otter that he had killed. When the news spread that the hunters were going to leave, all of Corona's tribe left their village and rushed toward Coral Cove, the village of the Alouettes. The Alouettes were laughing while they were working, as if they were happy to be leaving the island. Corona's father was talking to Captain Orlov. Corona could not hear the words because of all the noise that the other hunters made. All of the men who were working on the canoe had stopped and were watching Corona's father and Captain Orlov. They were arguing over how much Captain Orlov should pay Corona's father for all the otter that he had killed. They did not end up making a fair bargain, so a fight started between the Alouettes and Corona's tribe. In the end, Corona's father ended up dying. Chapter 5 of Island of the Blue Dolphins In all the memory of Galasat, that night was the most terrible. When the day came, the tribe grew quiet, for they remembered the ones who were gone. They chose a new chief to take Karana's father's place. Kimki was his name. It was decided that because they had lost a lot of men in the war, that the women would now do the work of the men. The men were not happy about this, but this was the way it worked. Kimki announced then that he was going to look for an island in his canoe. It was called Santa Catalina. He went alone because there were few men and they needed them to work in the village. That night the tribe crowded around the fire and talked. Would Kimki ever come back? Island of the Blue Dolphins, Chapter 6 Every day someone would go to the cliff and scan the sea. During the day was always a watcher on the cliff. The spring came and the sea was empty. In the old days, the spring sometimes ran low and no one worried. Now, people are afraid they are going to die in thirst. It was the time of year the alouettes come. Watchers on the cliff began to look for the red sails. Karana packed her clothes and went to the hidden canoes. The moon was growing pale and there was a light in the east. Karana went back to the cove and gave a signal. She could see the ship clearly. Karana took two baskets and some things to take on the Alouette ship. The ship is about to leave, and Ulap said it will come back after the storm. The wind blew in fierce gusts as they left the village, stinging the Indians with sand. The ship was anchored outside of the cove. In Chapter 7, in the Island of the Blue Dolphins, 
White man come to retrieve Karana and her brother Ramo to relocate them to a different island. When Ramo forgets his fishing spear and wants to go get it, Karina tells him otherwise, but he didn't listen. Karana was on a boat staring at Ramo at coral, the Coral Cove entrance. She screams and jumps into the waves and swam all the way to shore. The white man left and Karana and her brother were left alone. Island of the Blue Dolphins. On the Mesa, Rama decides that Chief Chowick does not sue in, so he changes it to Tanu Sitlopai. He soon wants to go to the place where the canoes were hidden. In the morning, Rama was not in the hut, and Karana knew that he probably got up in the dark and went to the place where the canoes were hidden. Thinking of all the trouble that might befall him as Karana walked along the trail, she wondered if she should let Rama go along the cliff alone. She went up to the mesa to put the basket away. Karana went to the village. As she went, she could hear dogs barking far off. Karana left the trail and climbed upward. In the distance, she saw the wild dogs moving in a circle. In the middle, lay Ramo. He had a deep wound in his throat. When Karana picked him up, she knew he was dead. From his footsteps, Karana could tell he never made it to the cliff. Karana carried Ramo up to the village. The pack followed. They did not leave until Karana came out of the hut carrying a club. Chapter 9 of Island of the Blue Dolphin. Karana burns all houses in Galasad so there are only ashes left. From there, she takes nothing except for a basket of food to a place where she wants to live until the ship returns. Galasad forbade women making weapons in the tribe, so she goes to find some left behind, but finds none. For a long time, while she laid on the rock, each night the wild dogs trotted below her, but she was too high for the wild dogs to ever reach her, so she had nothing to worry about, but she still was cheerful. Every time she went down to the ravine for shellfish or water, she carried a bow and arrow and a sling on her back. After she returned from gathering shellfish and water, she found the leader of the wild dogs, the one with gray hair and yellow eyes watching her from the brush. It is summertime on the island of the blue dolphins. The winds are warm and Karana is still searching for the white man's ship that might return to the island of the blue dolphins. Karana was very lonely and kept on having terrible dreams. Karana killed three of the dogs but not the leader. Yet I cannot say I was really afraid as I stood there on shore. At dusk I looked back. The island of the blue dolphins had disappeared. Night fell and I drank from the basket. The water was cool. Dawn broke in the clear sky. By turning back to the island, I would not have nearly so far to travel. The wind did not blow until the sun was overhead. I reached the island of the blue dolphins. I was hugging the sand. I fell asleep, not thinking of the wild dogs. Karana had made it back safely to the island of the blue dolphins after trying to find her people in a canoe trip that failed. After laying on the beach for two days... She, because she was so tired, she decided this was home. There are many reasons she picked the headlands. The water reached the cliff so it had good protection. But first she would have to deal with the wild animals. At first she had to make a temporary shelter for, for the rain. She had food for a few days. On the third day the rain stopped and she started looking for things to build her home. She was happy and thought good fortune was near. In Island of the Blue Dolphins, Chapter 12, we start with Karana building our friends out of ribs so she is safe from the island's wild animals. It takes her half of the winter, but she finally has enough wood to build her house. While she is building her house and tools, she was catching her food and cooking. Karana also made her own tools, including her basket, to hold glue and water. She even made a fire out pit and designed it so she didn't have to make one every night. Karana After the long period of working to make her house, she finally began to plot to kill the wild dogs so she could avenge her brother and not make the same mistake as Ramo did. She needed more weapons that were sharper and stronger. She searched for the materials all day and burned dried sai sai fish for light at night. To make the last hole, she would have to slay the mighty sea elephant for its tooth a strong enough to be head. In chapter 13 of Island of the Blue Dolphins, Karana sets out to kill some sea elephants for their teeth to make arrow points to kill the wild dogs. 
She worries if she will get hurt and run into the wild dog pool dragging herself home, or if a sea elephant will turn on her. In the end, she does get hurt, but doesn't run into the wild dogs. Island of the Blue Dolphins, Chapter 15. Before the Alouettes came to the island, there had been few wild dogs. But now that the Alouettes had killed most of the men, their pet dogs had joined the pack, and it became much bolder. The tribe then planned to get rid of them, but the ship had came, and the people left Galsat. Karana had already killed five dogs, but there were still a lot of them left. She had got ready to kill the rest by putting her weapons near the cave. Karana made a fire and pushed it into the cave. Soon the dogs would have to come out. Karana hoped not to kill more than five, for that's how many arrows she had, but then decided to save them all for the leader. Finally, the leader came out. Karana hit him in the chest with an arrow. Karana then felt bad and carried him to her house. He never left and soon became her friend. In the wound healed, Karana called him Ronto. In Chapter 16 of Island of the Blue Dolphins, every day Karana watched for the white men's ship, yet it did not return that spring nor in the summer. She also watched for the red sails of the Alouette ship. Karana went to the place where she had left her canoe. She also went to the place where the others were hidden, but they were dried out and cracked. She then decided to make the canoe smaller. When she was finished, she wanted to try it out. Rantu and Karana went to the and found a cave. In the cave, they saw a devil fish. Karana then decided to make the special spear that was needed for catching it. But she was very happy with the canoe, for it had no leaks. In Chapter 17 of Island of the Blue Dolphins, storms come down on the island. Karana busies herself by making a dress and, more importantly, to a new spear to catch the devil fish. The spear is made out of elephant teeth, very strong. And spring comes and Karana hunts for the devil fish again. Rantu doesn't come. She leaves him behind. And apparently the wild dogs have been sniffing around like they have a score to settle. This is what happens in Chapter 18 of Island of the Blue Dolphins. Flowers were plentiful that, that spring. So were birds. Why, blackbirds were flying over the Island of the Blue Dolphins. The mother bird had just laid two speckled eggs in her nest. Meanwhile... Karana was cooking up some abalones for her and Rantu. Karana was also making a skirt out of cormorant feathers. She was thinking about the white men's ship. Would they ever come back for her, or will they not? This is what happens in Chapter 18 of Island of the Blue Dolphins. In Chapter 19 of Island of the Blue Dolphins, Karana decides to catch the giant elephant. She looks, but after a long time, gives up. She starts to gather abalone. Rantu points in a little cave, and Karana finds the giant elephant. They fought it and finally won the battle. What happened was Karana held her spear at the giant elephant. She threw it, but missed. On her second try, she hit it. The giant elephant quickly swam away. Karana pulled the string at the end of the spear and dragged the giant elephant on land. Rantu attacked the giant elephant, and it attacked him, and little by little by little, dragged him in the water. Karana saved him, and then she got attacked. She finally won. Karana decides to never attack a giant elephant again. Chapter 20 of Island of the Blue Dolphins Karana gathers more food and supplies to stock up for winter. Then, Karana and Rantu go exploring at Tall Rock. After that, they go to Black Cave, where Karana follows a hawk into a cove. Karana and Rantu end up discovering skeletons that must be her ancestors. After a struggle with the tide, Karana escapes the cave and promises she will never go there again. She hides the canoe. Karana then sees the Alouette ship coming closer and closer. Karana packs up her stuff and brings it to her safe cave. In the morning, 
The Alouettes arrived on shore. Karana convinces Ron to join her in the cave. And they seal the doors with rocks and hide out for a while. Chapter 21 was about Karana going back home. When she got home, she discovered that there was no food left. There was supposed to be three whale ribs on the fence near her cave, but they were missing. Karana had to stay here, and she survived by eating roots and had gathered abalone she found in the sea. While Karana waited in the cave, she burned fish for light, and then she began, began to make a skirt out of cormorant. One day, Rantu approached an alouette girl, and she motioned for Karana to come and speak with her. Karana had thought of throwing her spear at the girl, but did not. In the end of the chapter, the girl made Karana a necklace of black stone. Chapter 22 of Island of the Blue Dolphins. Karana could see the necklace on the rock. Karana decided not to move and stood there all morning. While Rantu was barking, Karana heard footsteps below her. A girl came out and, st and stood there quietly looking at the necklace. She picked up the necklace and put it down into the mouth of the cave. Karana found an injured otter on a bowl of kelp. She brought the otter to the pool to nurse it back, at, back to health. She couldn't go there for three days because of high tide and then she went back and the otter was gone. When I was taking care of the otter some days, I would run out of food. But when the otter swam away, I always have enough food to eat. It was springtime and the flowers started to blossom. Birds came back to the island and chirped. Tanner and Lorai were building a nest. Lorai had laid two speckled eggs and hatched two beautiful birds. Also, a young gull had fallen from its nest and broke its leg. I bound a bone with sticks and sinew. The bird was white with a yellow beak. He did not try to walk in around until later because he was too young to fly. My yard now seemed to be a happy place. I saw a sea otter playing in the kelp. It was like a game we played when we were kids. I had looked for Marnani, but they all looked the same. I went up to shore on my canoe and realized that Manani was following me. He ate the fish that I held up very fast. Nor did I see him for two moons, and then one morning I saw him. Behind him were two baby otter. They were as small as puppies. Manani had to teach them to swim by swimming in circles until they followed. I had realized that Manani was a girl, so I renamed her Wanani, which means girl with large eyes. She liked abalone better than fish. I would never kill an animal again, and without animals, the world would be a bad place. Island of the Blue Dolphins, Chapter 25 Karana watched and prepared for the Alouette's ruby red ship to return. She gathered shellfish, which she dried and stored in the cave where she also kept her canoe. Karana also built more weapons, including a spear, bow, and a quiver of arrows. If the Alouettes did choose to return, she was ready to move from cave to cave or even live in her canoe. For many years after the Alouettes had come, the otter as well as Karana feared the Alouettes. Every summer, the otter left the kelp beds of Coral Cove and swam to the kelp beds of Tall Rock. There they stayed until the first storms of winter. Karana eventually gave up on keeping track of the passing years. The otter, too, seemed to have forgotten since they didn't leave any longer. That year, Rontu passed away. Island of the Blue Dolphins, Chapter 26 Karana was very sad about Rontu's death. Therefore, Karana did not mind that she needed to stay in the cave during the winter season. During that time, Karana made four snares from notched branches. One time, during the prior summer, on her way to the beach where the sea elephants lived, Karana saw a little dog and was positive that it was Rontu's son. Karana suspected that the puppy was Rontu's son because he had the same yellow eyes, thicker fur, and was larger than the others. Karana knew that the dog was not Rantu, but she still planned to catch the dog in springtime. After, one day soon after, in the springtime, Karana set the snare traps with fish as the bait. The next morning, Karana awoke to find that she had caught several dogs, but not the son of Rantu. Because she didn't want the other dogs, she let them go. 
After several attempts, Corona eventually caught the son of Ronte. She named him Ronte R. In Island of the Blue Dolphins, Chapter 27, after the winter storms, Corona paddled around the reef on the canoe. The reef was very quiet. All morning, Corona worked on spreading fresh pitch into the cracks that needed it. When the sun was high, she turned the canoe over and crawled into it. Then she went to sleep. Not much time later, she woke up with a sound that she thought was thunder. But then she looked outside and saw that it was really water and that a huge wave was coming. So Karan ran to the cliff and stayed there for a long time. Then everything was completely still. When out of nowhere, two waves crashed with each other. Then it seemed like it stopped, so Karana went with Ron to Aru, but a wave surprised her. So Karana and Ron to Aru ran to the cliff where they were safe. Chapter 28, Island of the Blue Dolphin. The earthquake did little damage, and the canoes were the biggest loss. Karana built herself a little canoe. One morning... As she is gathering seaweed for a fire to pitch, she sees something in a distance. A sail! A ship! The sails are not red, like the oilettes, and they do not look like the white man's ship. So who is it? Should she hide or show herself? Up on the headland, Corona watches two men. One without a beard comes ashore in a canoe. She hears one of them shout, and she knows they found her fire and canoe. Karana runs home to put on her otter cape and cormorant skin. She grabs the box with earrings and necklace, and with Rantu Ru goes to Coral Cove to meet the men. Karana wades out into the waves, but the ship moves south and then out of sight. In Chapter 29 of Island of the Blue Dolphins, Karana is getting ready to leave the island with the white men. Karana was making supper for her and her dog, Rontu Aru. While she gave her food to Rontu Aru, she headed for the men's camp. While she was at the camp, one of the white men made Karana a blue dress. The white men's ship stayed at Coral Cove for nine days. The white men were there for Otter. After the nine days were up, Karana was getting her things to leave the island with the white men. Karana was going with the white men to their ship, and the ship sailed into the sea.